Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Now the early history of the automobile is filled with people from all kinds of family backgrounds. Farmers, industrialists, tinkerers, mechanics, lawyers, electricians, publishers. The early creators of cars were quite a diverse lot. Yet there is one profession that we haven't mentioned. Artists. Art has been around a long time. Carved figurines have been found in ancient caves. Classical statues and paintings can be found to this day. And of course, uh, in the Renaissance and beyond, artists began to sign their work and achieve great fame. And it was in the early 20th century that a true artist began to apply the principles of the artist trade to the automobile. This genius was Ettore Bugatti. Ettore Arco Isidoro Bugatti was born in 1881 into a family of artists in Milan, Italy. His grandfather, Giovanni, was a well-respected sculptor and architect, and he had many artist children, including Ettore's father, Carlo. Carlo expressed his art in both furniture design and fine jewelry for which he was known to be amongst the best, and his work was sought out by wealthy patrons the world over. Famous painters married into the family as well, and by the time of young Ettore's birth, the Bugattis were amongst the most famous artisans in Milan. With all of this creative blood flowing through his veins, young Ettore learned from a very early age the artist's eye. Indeed, his brother, uh, Rembrandt Bugatti, would himself eventually become a sculptor of considerable renown. Yet for our Ettore, his vision involved engineering. He had a mechanical knack for things, along with his natural gift for art. Unfortunately, the fine art schools in Milan of the time did not teach engineering, and the engineering schools did not teach art. So at age 17, he did the sensible thing and quit school, taking on an engineering apprenticeship at a local company that manufactured bicycles. His time with the Prunetti and Stucci bicycle works began in 1898, and his restless creativity kept his hands busy. He built his first motor vehicle at the factory in his spare time, the Bugatti Type 1. It was actually a motorized tricycle with two De Dion engines powering the rear wheels independently. Only the prototype was ever built, but it garnished a lot of attention. One of the people was a local nobleman, Count Guglianelli, and he decided to become Bugatti's first patron. In 1900, the good Count tossed Bugatti a bag of money with the instruction to build an incredible car. Completed in 1901, it was titled the Type 2 and was completely his own design from the wheels up. 3.1 liter four-cylinder inline engine producing some 16 horsepower, two-speed transmission with chain drive, it was well designed and solidly built. At the same time, the overall aesthetics of the car was important to Bugatti. The machine had to appeal to the eyes and ears wherever you looked. It could cruise at over 30 miles an hour and turn heads as it went. Indeed, it was displayed at the Milan Industrial Exposition in 1901 and was given the Excellence in Design Award by the Automobile Club of France. And his work caught the eye of a new patron, a French nobleman by the name of Baron Adrien de Turkheim. He was amongst the founders and the main money behind a very significant French car maker, de Dietrich. He had two factories making large touring cars and sports cars for wealthy customers, and within weeks of the fair offered young Bugatti a position at one of his factories as technical director, despite the fact that he hadn't even finished his apprenticeship yet. Ettore was not yet even 20 years old, and was still legally, in the laws of the time, a minor. His father had to sign for him in order to take the job, but take it he did, and moved to Alsace 
which at the time was under the control of the German Empire, yet one of the Baron's factories was located there. For the next few years, Bugatti infused his engineering and artistic flair into the Dietrich car. These cars were very expensive, yet sold fairly well, with over 100 cars leaving the factory under his leadership. Unfortunately, the Baron soon lost interest in cars, and the factory ceased production in 1904. For his next automotive move, he teamed up with a colleague of his, Mr. Emil Mathis, to make their own cars. They secured a factory in nearby Strasbourg and went into production making the Hermes. Unfortunately, this did not work out so well as the two men were of different minds. They parted ways in 1906 and Notori went freelance as a car designer for a few years while he got his bearings. It was in 1909 that Bugatti finally established a car company truly of his own, Automobiles et Bugatti, in the town of Molsheim, which was not too far from Strasbourg. He had been working on a car in his basement prior to this, which he would call the Type 10, and he displayed this car as his first product at the local shows. People loved it, and sales came in. Armed with even more money, he designed and, through to the First World War, produced the first truly iconic and beautiful Bugatti, the Type 13. Handcrafted four-cylinder engine of 30 horsepower, yet of only 1.4 liters displacement, and a four-valve-per-cylinder engine, which had not been done before. Three-speed transmission, shaft drive, and extremely light. This was a car that you almost fly as opposed to drive. The car was small, but with an underslung chassis and primitive type of monocoque body construction to give it more rigidity and stability. And every inch of the car, inside and out, was meticulously designed for beauty in motion. Bugatti also had a love of horses and horse racing, and so he named his Molsheim factory Pure Song, which means pure blood in French, despite the fact that the factory was in Germany. Fate would correct this, as after World War I, the French-German border was changed so that now he was officially a French company. And we'll talk later about the legendary Bugattis of the post-war years. Yet now, we can answer the question, what happens when art meets machine? The answer is Bugatti. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.